Hello, everyone. Welcome to Get Cozy with the Mediterranean Diet in autumn. Just going to give a couple minutes um, to see if anyone wants to join me live. There will be a replay. So um, if you have any questions, if you're watching this on the replay and you have any questions, you can always, I will post this uh, to my YouTube channel and I'll put it in my groups on Facebook and wherever you find it, you can always put questions there if you have any questions and I will get back to you. So if anyone does join me live, it'd be great if you could tell me if you could hear me. Um, and if you do have any questions during uh, my presentation, uh, the way this is gonna work is I'm going to bring up some slides and I'm gonna talk for probably 15 minutes or so. And then there will be time afterwards for any questions. And there is a chat box uh, down below on Zoom. Uh, and you can put your questions in there and I will look at them at the end. I'm not gonna look at them throughout the presentation. I'll, I'll look at the end. Um, and uh, let's see, I guess we'll just, uh, it's 11.02, so let's just get right into it. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing okay today. I am going to share my screen and bring up my presentation. There we go. Let me see if I can bring this down a little bit. Oops. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. Cozy up to the Mediterranean diet for autumn. So I've done, I did a presentation uh, in the spring that was called Spring Clean Your Diet. And uh, you seem to like it. So I thought let's do it again in autumn because the Mediterranean diet is all about eating with the seasons. So there are completely different vegetables coming out right now. We have farms uh, in my local area that I go to. So that's what I kind of gauge, uh, how I use to gauge what uh, fruits and vegetables are in season. And you can get completely different flavors and different kinds of meals in the autumn going into winter. So let's talk about eating with the seasons. So now that fall and winter's coming, let's look at the foods that are in season now. And I have a list for you. It's an alphabetical list here of all the fruits and vegetables that are in season right now. And they will continue to be in season throughout the winter. So we have apples, bananas. Now bananas really aren't a local food, but we have them all year round. So there are apples, bananas, beets, bell peppers, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, I love cauliflower, <laughs> celery, collard greens, cranberries, we all think of cranberries when it comes to Thanksgiving time, garlic, ginger, grapes, green beans, kale, kiwi, lemons. Now all the citrus fruits will be coming in for winter because they have a lot of vitamin C. So when cold and flu season comes around, that's when those, the foods that you need for your body are what are in season. So we have lemons, lettuce, <clears throat> limes, mangoes, mushrooms. I love mushrooms. They have vitamin D. So if you don't get a lot of uh, sunshine because you're in because of the pandemic, mushrooms are a good source of vitamin D. Onions, parsnips. Now parsnips are those things that look like carrots, but they're kind of a yellow color. <laughs> pears. <clears throat> I love pears in the autumn. Uh, peas, pineapples, potatoes, pumpkins, of course. You get your pumpkin spice latte. We can always go, go get a pumpkin. Radishes, raspberries, rutabagas, spinach, squash, all of the squashes, uh, acorn squash, butternut squash, you know, yellow squash, uh, sweet potatoes, yams, Swiss chard, and turnips. Turnips are also a great uh, soup food. So eat with the seasons as much as possible. Now I'm going to have, I'm going to teach you how to make a basic soup recipe. Now this recipe is in my Mediterranean, the big book of Mediterranean diet cooking. Uh, and I have it here for you in one second. Um, so I think this time of year, we just want to be cozy, right? That's why I called this get cozy with the Mediterranean diet. And uh, the weather's getting a little chilly and brisk and soup just feels and tastes so good, right? So if you can get a really simple, basic, creamy vegetable soup under your belt, you can make it with so many different vegetables. Like I have a basic carrot soup in here and it's a really rich, creamy soup and it doesn't use any milk or cream because I thicken it with half of a potato. So when I'm making all the vegetables, I add a potato to it. And I learned this trick actually from 
the White House cookbook. <laughs> because they have a navy bean soup recipe and then they thicken it by putting mashed potatoes in it. So I don't use mashed potatoes, but I put a potato in and then when I blitz everything together, it becomes mashed potatoes. And it adds a nice creaminess without adding fat. So this is a very low calorie soup. And if you wanna take a screen grab of it, there it is on your screen right now. Or take a picture of it with your phone. It's my creamy carrot soup. Now I've made this soup <clears throat> with like I said, parsnips look like carrots. You can use parsnips instead of carrots. I've made it with um, a bag of frozen peas. I've made it with asparagus. I've made it with turnips. You can just substitute whatever is your favorite vegetable on butternut squash. Um, and it just works so well. So all I really do is I use a pound of carrots or whatever vegetable. I use a small onion cut up, the half a potato, and then I just season it with salt and pepper. And I used rosemary in this particular recipe because rosemary goes really well with carrots. Uh, so does ginger. But if you were using um, asparagus, you might want to use a little thyme or something like that. So you can really uh, mold this soup to whatever are your favorite flavors. And uh, so I think if you take a screen grab of that, it's a good soup to get you going. It's really, really easy to make. And uh, everyone will like it in your family, I promise. And uh, it's so low in calories. So if you look on this, the serving, is 90 calories and it has zero fat because there's no cream making it thick you can actually thicken things with other vegetables so let's talk a little bit about meal prep and planning take a sip of water because <clears throat> when the fall comes around we all really start to get busy right we're kind of have more time in the summer but then we really get back to it in the fall the kids are back in school you know maybe you're starting some new projects and starting to start thinking about the holidays and things like that. And we're um, meal planning and meal prep can really save you time. So these are just some tips for, you can do this uh, if you have a day of the week, like a Sunday, like today or something where you have a little extra time, you can prepare some foods that then you can mix and match throughout the week. So what I like to do is, <clears throat> excuse me. What I like to do is I make a sheet pan of roasted vegetables and I keep them in a glass container in my refrigerator. So what I'll do is I'll just chop them up into similar size pieces. I'll put them on a sheet pan. I'll roll them around with some, you know, I'll toss them with some olive oil, put a little salt and pepper. You can put a few sprigs of rosemary or thyme or something on the sheet pan too, just to scent it with your flavor, maybe some garlic. If you put garlic on, I would leave the skin on and maybe just like slit it a little bit so it doesn't like blow up, but um, it gets really nice and creamy when it's roasted in the oven. So I'll make a big vat of that and then I'll, I'll, you could eat it then, or you can keep it throughout the week and just keep using them. So how many things can you do with a sheet pan of, of uh, vegetables like that, right? So you can puree them into a soup. You can <clears throat> put them into a stew. You can make a sandwich out of them, layer them up, put a sandwich on them with maybe like a little ricotta cheese or, or a little pesto or something like that. You could toss them in a pasta. You could serve them with rice. Uh, you can do so many things with them. So. If you make a few things like that in the beginning of the week, you can mix and match them. So I also like to make a big vat of whole grains. So each week I'll pick a different grain. So I might use, I might make a big vat of brown rice or a big vat of farro. Farro is an ancient gra uh, ancient grain from Rome. And it is, has a really nice nutty texture and it holds up well in the refrigerator so that you can just reheat it with other things. So you can mix it with your roasted vegetables. You can also, let me take another sip of water. <clears throat> you can also make soups and sauces in the beginning of the week and keep them for later in the week. Like if you make a basic tomato sauce for pasta, sometimes I'll make a big vat of that and I'll, I'll eat it one night for dinner when I made it fresh and then I'll freeze the other half of it. And then next week, I don't have to make it again. I can just defrost it and use it again or use it later in the week or reuse it for something else. Sometimes I like to make stuffed peppers. So bell peppers are in season for the fall. So I'll parboil a, a bell pepper and then I'll stuff it with the grain that I made, a little of those vegetables, and then I'll pour some tomato sauce over it after I bake them in the oven and you have a yet another meal. So these are the, way you can, the ways you can save time and mix and match and make sure you get your vegetables for your week. Soups are the same way. You can make a big vat of soup, have it for dinner, have it for lunch, keep it in the refrigerator, maybe eat it a couple days later or freeze it and have it the following week. You can do the same thing with any type of casserole that you're making or like a lasagna. Lasagna freezes really well. 
Um, anything that you make in a casserole dish like that, you can stick in the freezer, defrost it, stick it in the oven, you have another meal. So think about ways, what are some of your favorite meals, how you can mix and match some of the ingredients. Because if you look at a restaurant menu and you see all the different meals that they have on there, it's really the same basic ingredients that they mix and match in different ways. You know, you can make chicken one night and then you can make it in a bunch of different ways. You can serve it with the vegetables, you can put it in a soup, you can toss it in a pasta, you can serve it with rice. So just think about those kind of ways that you can mix and match, spend one day where you kind of prepare some of these ingredients and then you're all set for the week. My next tip for the Mediterranean diet in, uh, in autumn is, well, this should be really any time of year, <laughs> but I want to encourage you to cut back on meat because in the Mediterranean diet, red meat especially is eaten sparingly. It's not eating, it's not eaten very often. We don't eat it every day. Um, red meat, you might only eat a couple times a month. I mean, I know in the United States, we usually eat um, meat a lot more often than that. We usually start with meat and we build our meals around that. But if you think of it the opposite way, start with your vegetables on your plate and then make your meat a side dish. Really cut back on that because there are so many, years ago, I tried to be a vegetarian. I'm sort of a more of a flexitarian these days where I, I try to eat vegetarian, but once in a while, I'll let meat into my diet. When I first became a vegetarian, um, everybody that I met that knew that I was trying to be a vegetarian said, you're not going to get enough protein. That's the first thing everybody says. And it's just not true because there are so many vegetables that are high in protein. It's a better source of protein. It's a healthier protein than you get from meat. So yes, you do get protein from meat, but I have um, a list here that I'm going to share with you of the high protein vegetables. So there are many plant-based protein sources that are really hearty and delicious and have even more protein than meat as well as other necessary nutrients that we need. And I have a little fact here for you. Did you know that broccoli contains more protein per calorie than steak? Broccoli, broccoli is so good for you. And something like spinach has an equal amount of protein as chicken and fish. So you don't have to worry about not getting protein if you cut back on your meat. So here are some high protein vegetable sources. Broccoli, <clears throat> like I mentioned, Spinach, spinach is very high in protein, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, asparagus, avocados, artichokes, mushrooms, watercress, cabbage, bok choy, mustard greens, and collard greens. Really any of the dark leafy greens are really good for you. And there are also a lot of uh, protein in whole grains. So whole oats have protein. You can buy breads made with whole wheat and rye. Faro, like I mentioned before, has a lot of protein. Buckwheat, bulgur, millet, barley, they're all the whole grains that we should be eating. Spelt, quinoa. Quinoa is very high in protein. So, and quinoa is really, really easy to make too. It's very quick. It's not actually a whole grain, it's really a seed, but we use it, it functions in our diet as a whole grain. And then of course, brown rice, all the wild rices, and corn. Corn is one of those crazy foods where it's a vegetable and it's a grain at the same time. <laughs> If you think about it, you can eat corn as a vegetable, where we eat corn on the cob, you eat the kernels, but then they also process it into a grain. So we use cornmeal in a lot of our, of our meals. So corn is actually both. So corn is also a good source of protein. I also would like to encourage you to add fish to your diet. So whether it's a tuna salad sandwich for lunch, or if you make a baked salmon dinner, bake, bake salmon for dinner, try to cut back on your meat, try replacing meat once a week with fish to make sure you get your omega-3 fatty acids. So they're the, they're the, the kind of fat that's healthy. It's the heart healthy fat. Here are some fishes that are really healthy for you and that are always recommended on the Mediterranean diet. So salmon, which is readily available and pretty inexpensive anywhere you can find it in any supermarket. Salmon is delicious and you can, it adapts to so many different ways of cooking it. Um, so salmon, tuna, mackerel, trout, herring, sardines. These are all the so-called fatty fishes because they have those omega-3 fatty acids. They're the heart healthy fats that are good for you. And then there are other fishes that are healthy as well. They may not have as many omega-3s um, as the fatty fishes that they call them. They're the oily fishes, they call them, the way that they're uh, made. I mean, the way that they, their consistency is. So some of the leaner fishes are more like the fillets, like um, flounder, 
cod, mahi-mahi, halibut, catfish. They, they're not as high in omega-3 fatty acids, but they're full of other nutrients. So if you don't always want to eat salmon or tuna, um, there are lots of choices out there for different kinds of fish. And it's really healthy to add fish to your diet. Um, so like sometimes, like don't even forget about shellfish. You know, like sometimes people think shellfish are uh, fattening, but they're also the good kind of healthy fat. So even if um, you just want to add a few shrimp to your dinner to your or to a salad or something like that, uh, the shellfishes are good too. Maybe some mussels as an appetizer. Um, sometimes I'll buy in the supermarket, I'll buy crab cakes or I'll buy stuffed clams. Um, and you know, it's another way of getting a little bit of fish in your diet. Um, mussels are really easy to make. You can buy mussels in a bag and then take them home and just steam them. They cook up in about three minutes. You know, sometimes I'll put a little white wine and some water in a big pan and I'll put all the mussels and then maybe I'll put like some hot pepper flakes and maybe some herbs and I'll put the lid on and I'll let them steam. And then all the fragrance from the herbs and the wine and everything will flavor the mussels. And mussels actually will make a broth similar to meat. So they'll release their juices into the broth, into the uh, liquid as well. And you can dip a little bread into it if you want to, as long as they're, you know, you make sure you clean them well before you use them. So try some fish. I think when I was in high school, almost every single day I had a tuna, a tuna salad sandwich for lunch. <laughs> I'm a tuna fanatic. Um, so also in the autumn when we're chilly, um, try some herbal teas. So in, in the evening when you want to get cozy, um, herbal teas are a great choice. Now, um, I like to have a hot beverage in the evening in the cold months and in the, during the daytime I have to have coffee, <laughs> but in the evening I like to have tea. And now that I'm a little bit older, caffeine kind of bothers me in the evening. I can drink it during the day and it doesn't really matter. But in the evening, like I love black tea, I love green tea, but I have to get the decaffeinated kind. So I also just like to try herbal teas. Um, I love a mint medley tea, or you can even make um, uh, tea out of the herbs in your kitchen. You know, if you grow mint, gr mint grows really easily. You can put a few mint leaves into a cup of hot water and just make mint tea on your own. Um, my sister likes to grow lemon balm and she makes a little tea um, out of lemon balm, ginger and turmeric. Um, and she makes a, a pitcher of that and she sort of drinks it as, as iced tea and she calls it her elixir. <laughs> and so it has all these good nutrients that are in these herbs. Um, but you can even just put a lemon slice in a, in a cup of hot water or try mixing and matching, you know, the, the different herbs that you grow. You can even use things like basil and stuff if you want to. So try different combinations and see what you like or find a brand that you like. Um, there's a brand that I like called Puka. They make all kinds of interesting uh, herb and spice blend teas. And they're very, very light when you make them. Uh, so they're not overpowering with um, a lot of these, you know, they have one that's called like four cinnamon and you think it's gonna be like pow, but it's not, it's actually really light. Cinnamon's really good for your blood. Um, so why don't you try some of those teas? It's a brand called Puka, P-U-K-K-A. -K -K not sponsored by them, I'm just recommending them. Or even just in the supermarket, I like to buy just like the Bigelow uh, Mint Medley or whatever it's called. It's, it's a peppermint spearmint blend and it's just, it's really nice in the evening. So that is it for my food tips for the Mediterranean diet for August. I have some lifestyle tips for you as well. You know, I always like to add um, my lifestyle tips because the Mediterranean diet is really a lifestyle. It's not just about what you're eating and your food. Um, so if you're a follower of me, uh, you'll probably heard me say this one a million times, but scarves, <laughs> I love scarves. I have a whole scarf collection. <laughs> Actually, it was just the other day I was, I was wandering around, um, this cute little neighborhood in my area called Haddonfield. And I saw a sign on a church that said um, thrift shop, you know, to benefit at the church. And I thought, oh, I've never, I haven't been in a thrift shop in a while. So you had to go down these little stairs and through this wooden door. It was like a really old church. And I was like, this is kind of interesting. It's fun. And when I went in there, they had all kinds of clothes and they had kitchen things. They had a whole wall of scarves and they were all $2 and they were beautiful. So they're just, you know, things that people donated. And then it, the church makes a little money off of it, but um, you know, scarves don't have to be really expensive and they can keep you warm. You can buy silk ones. You can just jazz up your outfit with them. You know, I could have a scarf on today with this red top and it would just be, you know, add a little color, a little pop of color, um, and then they keep you warm. So uh, if you ever notice, if you see pictures of Italy, people are walking around wearing scarves all the time because you know, they have this thing about like, getting hit by air. <laughs> it's, it's a saying they have in Italy where um, 
they don't want to be caught into a breeze because it can make you sick, you know, which whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but they always have a scarf just in case it gets a little windy or breezy or chilly, they can have a scarf with them. And it also just looks really cool. So add color, style and warmth to your outfit by accessorizing with a pretty scarf. My next tip is to shop your closet. So we're hearing a lot about fast fashion these days, right? And how there's so many cheap goods that you can find on Amazon. And, you know, it, it is nice to be able to buy some clothes inexpensively, but they're really not that well made. And they're, it's bad for the environment to be buying a bunch of these clothes that are so disposable. Um, so lessen your impact on the environment and save yourself some money too by shopping your closet. You probably have things in there that you don't even remember that you have. I mean, um, just go through to the very back of your closet, the furthest reaches that you can and remind yourself of what you have. Or if you like to put your clothes away for, you know, put your summer clothes away and get your fall and winter clothes out, you probably don't even remember everything that you have. And you're just like, oh, wow, I love this sweater. I forgot about that. Or like I... I was going through some old clothes recently and I had all these jackets and I was like, I forgot about these jackets. Like I used to wear these jackets when I went to an office all the time. And I thought, well, you know what? These look, look really cute with jeans too. So, you know, add some jackets to your, um, that pull out of your closet that you would normally wear, you know, like a blazer or something that you would normally wear if you think if you're going to like a job interview or to work, but just wear them casually. So shop your closet, see what you have in there, see what you haven't worn in a little while and anything that you really aren't going to wear, maybe you can donate to you know your local church or to some organization where someone else can shop your closet <laughs> and uh, save some money and get some new clothes. Or maybe you can have like a trading party with some of your friends where you bring some of your stuff you don't want anymore and they do and you swap, you know? So you don't always have to buy new clothes every season. And my last tip is for dinner, for dinner decor. So add unscented candles and flowers to your dinner table for a romantic dining experience. Now I say unscented on purpose because you don't want your a scented, heavily scented candle or heavily scented flowers that are gonna clash with the food that you're eating. Um, they're great for creating mood and ambiance in some of the other rooms in your house. But it's so nice sometimes, and even kids kind of get into this, if you have some candles on the table for dinner, um, just gives a nice warm glow, and it just kind of makes the, the time feel special. And uh, so that's my last tip, is to try to like jazz up your, your dinner, dinner experience, make the table look pretty, set a pretty table. I'm always telling people to buy pretty napkins, even if they're just paper napkins from the dollar store. I buy them all the time from the dollar store in different colors or different patterns, but candlelight can really add a little something special. Candlelight is magic and, uh, and flowers as well. Flowers really brighten up a room and it look great on your dining room table or your dinner table. So that is that. So I wanted to ask you, to join me on Instagram because um, I'd like to take a poll <laughs> and I don't know how many of you are on here live with me, um, but if you have gained weight during this pandemic and the lockdown, raise your hand because hello, here's my hand up, right? The gym's closed, couldn't get out that much, kind of get a little depressed by being stuck in the house. You know, I've been snacking and I have gained some weight. Um, as well. And uh, I'm done. The pandemic weight has to go. I'm over it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to really concentrate on the month of November. I'm, I'm going to start now, but I'm not going to start posting things to Instagram until November. Um, but I'm really going to concentrate um, by trying to limit my calories and lose some weight by actually following the Mediterranean diet and showing the wonderful, beautiful foods you can eat on the Mediterranean diet. I'm not going to do anything radical. Um, I'm not going to starve myself or anything like that. That's the whole point of the Mediterranean diet is that if you eat more vegetables and better foods and add some of the lifestyle elements, that it really, the weight will come off easily and naturally. So if you would like to join me on Instagram, I have my uh, Instagram address here. It's Instagram.com. It's just Donna DeRosa is my account. Uh, in my Instagram stories throughout November, I'm going to post what I'm eating every day. Uh, so just if you want to follow along. Um, I'm not going to go into um, the details about how everything I made. If you see something that you really like, you can always DM me on Instagram and ask me what I did. And I'll, I'll you know, I'll give you some pointers. Um, but that's what I'm going to do for November. So if you want to follow me on Instagram in November, I'm going to be in my Instagram stories, just posting 
uh, you know, my lunch, my dinner, whatever snack I make, and maybe even some lifestyle tips about candles and flowers. And, you know, we'll see what we get up to. Uh, but I thought it would be a fun way to do it. It'll keep me accountable myself by being on Instagram every day and showing you what I'm going to eat and stop eating the Halloween candy that I bought to give out to the kids. We're all, we all know what's going on, right? So raise your hand if you want to lose some weight <laughs> or if you just want to eat healthier. Um, uh, so that is all I have for you today. Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen. I can find my cursor. There we go. <laughs> And let me go in the chat and see if anyone has any questions. Okay. I don't see any questions. Um, and like I said, if you're watching the replay and you have questions, you can always write to me later, wherever you find the video, there will be some place underneath it where you can comment. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, don't forget to screen grab the recipe that is from my big book of Mediterranean diet cooking for soup, because I think that will serve you very well throughout the fall. Um, you can just swap out the vegetables that you use. Um, so that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and if you have, um, anything, any topics that you want me to do for next month, let me know. I, I've been trying to do these, uh, live webinars once a month and they're not always about diet and food. Um, last month or the month before I did one on calendar using your calendar um, to fulfill your dreams. Um, so I do have one planned coming up for, um, how to make decisions. Um, it's a little simple technique that you can use. And I don't mean for like, what am I having for lunch, but for like major decisions in your life, how to really debate all the sides of the question. Um, so I think that's the one I'm going to do next, but if you have anything else that you would like me to go over, um, if you have any ideas, you can always send them my way. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful autumn and I will uh, see you soon. Bye.